Hello. Good evening. This is Dr. Susan Kitao making a presentation and especially one that will benefit uh, the students who are pursuing counseling in various institutions in my country and maybe East Africa, Africa and elsewhere, especially those that uh, follow my YouTube channel because I'll post this afterwards. For those people that we are meeting for the first time, I am a lecturer at African Zurian University in the Department of Counseling Psychology. I'm the chair currently of the Counseling Psychology Department. I am also a senior counselor supervisor with the Kenya Counseling and Psychological Association, the largest professional counselors and psychologist body in Kenya. And I also chair uh, the Kiambu County KCPA. I am also a lead consultant in mental health issues, a certified mediator, a trained teacher with Mind for Self Compassion USA, founder Susan Gitao Counseling Foundation, a member of East African Standard Force, where especially to handle and support matters uh, mental health. I am a presidential awardee uh, of 2018, uh, an award that is given annually by the president in my country and each county of the 47 counties that make up Kenya, they pick outstanding people who've done uh, outstanding uh, activities and given outstanding services to the community. And I happen to get that for humanitarian service and using my education to change lives in the communities. I'm also a founding member of Global African Mental Health Network and Mind for Self Compassion Africa. And I'm happy the Global African Mental Health Network is a discussion that has been there since 2018. And uh, not until last year, end of last year, in uh, November, December, we were able to launch uh, the first activity uh, in South Africa to bring together Africans and understand how we navigate mental health issues and how we can make the best use of the resources available as we develop resources that speak to our context. I'm a researcher, community volunteer counselor and peace ambassador in this nation. And I am not shy to say I love young people and especially even for this presentation, I'm very happy that uh, we will have a uh, majority of them learning from this presentation. So when you look at that picture, you'll see an ideal supervisor, supervisee relationship is one where a supervisee comes with their mind like clogged up with their thought processes, not very clear. And it's the work and the uh, responsibility or the duty of a supervisor to try and align the thought processes, disorganized maybe way of thinking, a lot of fears, a lot of anxieties, a lot of self-doubt. Uh, and that's why I put that picture there. Just like the way we organize as counselors, the minds of our clients, even a supervisor can help a supervisee, and especially those that come up in developmental stages to align their thoughts. The learning outcomes for this uh, presentation is that by the end of this session, you, the participant, will be able to review common supervision models, explain psychotherapy supervision model approaches, and apply a uh, psychotherapy supervision model in supervision practice. Just to recap, we have uh, developmental models, uh, and uh, developmental models uh, will uh, are models that uh, consider the stages an intern or a student uh, or a supervisor goes through and uh, this kind of support they require at different maybe levels, their competencies they want to develop, tasks they must accomplish and uh, especially probably what the industry wants or the professional uh, associations of bodies want and probably what is demanded of the entire profession locally and internationally. So different approaches can be applied uh, and it's important to note that um, the supervisor uses these stages 
of training a counselor to determine where the supervisee is and combines this with the student's personal initiative in practice and add to clinical uh, supervision. Uh, it's important to note that when you are a, a counselor, a supervisor, a lecturer, a trainer, to understand uh, the students uh, in their different developmental levels. We do have social role models and social role models will emphasize the role the supervisor plays and the focus of supervision. So the crucial themes there are like individual worldview as determined by experience, training, values, background, and general outlook. You realize very many different institutions of training, counselors and psychologists have their own culture. And sometimes that is what the student, the supervisor, the intern will bring for supervision. And so it would be good for you uh, as a supervisor to take note of that. The supervisor's role and style becomes uh, uh, mostly their theoretical orientation. And so it's always good to explain to your supervisees the theoretical model or approach you, you're using. And it's also good to find out if they also have uh, uh, an, an orientation, a theoretical orientation that they are also applying. Sometimes it may clash, but it's not always. Uh, I always see a supervisor who is aware and uh, uh, very ready to, to learn also from the supervisee. You don't get lost and you guys don't uh, really get lost from each other. So we do have the eclectic or integration models. These models are also regarded as a theoretical, mainly combining three supervisory roles with three foci areas. The three roles are one, being a teacher. In this role, the supervisor may lecture, instruct, and inform the supervising. Uh, the role of a counselor, assisting the supervisee to notice on blind spots and how these may be fixating the supervisor on client issues. Yes, so remember we say for you to have become a supervisor. In most cases, you have required minimum practice experience from your professional body, your country, or from the institutions that really um, uh, or monitor your practice. So we, are, we, we expect that you, you understand the different theoretical orientations. You understand the different ways you can uh, hypothesize psychological issues, even in your own supervisee. Uh, you can also play the role of a consultant as a supervisor, where you are now relating with your supervisee as if your colleagues or peers, you know? Sometimes you're like, uh, when they present a case for supervision, you're like a co-therapist. And that is quite encouraging. And in most cases, you'll find um, uh, those who really want uh, the, the upcoming counselors to grow, they would want them to feel like there's something they know. And that co-therapy comes out very well, very well. So integration will focus more on the process and skills building and development of the supervising. So the, we can talk about process. Uh, the process of counseling, like how did you begin and how you ended, what was happening in the middle. And we always say that we also understand the process of counseling a client. So as a supervisor, you already know, you can tell when maybe the beginning counselors, for example, have skipped a very crucial part of the process. And now you become a teacher in that case. So sometimes you may find in the conceptualization of the case and uh, conceptualization links very well with treatment planning. And so you may find that sometimes they didn't get it or sometimes they, they made their life very difficult for not doing very clear case conceptualization. Sometimes it's personalization of issues. You know, you may find that the supervisee is uh, personalizing a certain model, a certain issue, and it's all about them and the way they do therapy. And so you be you may need as a supervisor who really understands integration, be able even to pick that and uh, mirror that to the supervising. We do have competence-based models. 
some of the supervisees needs that uh, that include mastery of theoretical techniques, maybe skills that people study in counseling, and maybe imagine issues. Uh, you will find that um, the, the the practice of these skills, the application of therapeutic maybe techniques, they all uh, contribute to the development of uh, a competent, uh, effective therapist, and many others that may be defined by the professional bodies you are affiliated with, you and the supervisee or the supervisee. Sometimes it's a practice that demands that uh, for now, these competencies are very critical. You can see this is Bennett Levy 2019. That was just before COVID-19 pandemic happened. So right now we don't know if someone is to be called a competent uh, based therapist, are there other things that they must know today? And that is why it's defined with research, with uh, conversations day in, day out. Uh, people can always define who is a competence based therapist and so who is a competence based uh, supervisee or even supervisor. Deep discussion over there. Coming now to the psychotherapy supervision model itself, after giving like a review of other models that are very common or traditional models of supervision, psychotherapy or treatment model of counseling supervision focuses on how competent the counselor or the supervisee is in application of theoretical knowledge in client work. The supervisee is supposed to know how, you know, to be supported on how to apply, for example, the theoretical orientations or theoretical interventions. For example, psychodynamic uh, group of theories. We have humanistic, you know, we have behavioral, we have systemic, and we have modern theoretical approaches in clinical counseling practice. And, and Corey has given a very good outline of uh, how you can master uh, the theories that are used in counseling. And so, for a supervisor, you may need to go a notch higher, like mastering these theories. Probably you may have chosen one theoretical foundation or orientation, but that doesn't mean you don't understand the other theories because you do not know the supervisors that are likely to visit you uh, for supervision. So uh, psychotherapy models, they use the theoretical models in counseling, they also, which are also known as treatment models or orientation-based models. So why do we have to choose psychotherapy models? Psychotherapy-based or orientation-specific models are premised on respective theories of psychotherapy through counseling. A major advantage of these models is that where the supervisor and the supervisee share the same theoretical orientation, modeling is maximized. As the supervisor teaches and mastery of that theory and application of that theory is more easily integrated into the supervisory process. So you can imagine if I am person-centered, my supervisor is also person-centered, co or core-based theoretical model, you can see that the sinking of our practice together. But sometimes that may not be so, but I do respect in developed countries where they have uh, like really uh, uh, gotten to have different experts. You can hear this one is a psychoanalytic therapist. This one is, is PC. You know, pure <laughs> here in Africa, we are appreciating that therapy, especially psychotherapy, is still new. We are not very many decades old, but we are trying and trying to figure ourselves. We are trying to really get our position. Actually, in my country, it's only last year that um, we were able to have the counselors and psychologists bold gazetted so we haven't even started working in line with what the board expects the professional bodies to do but we have been having professional bodies very vibrant like kenya counseling psychological association that has now over eight thousand members where i belong as a member uh where we have our code of ethics we have our policy documents we have regular meetings and we like inviting uh speakers locally and internationally especially in terms of 
uh, clinical practice. Uh, probably also been the the, the 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 membership that has really pushed uh, for the um, counselors and psychologist act. A, any reviews done, you know, not shying or from putting in our resources to ensure that um, we're able to have very organized way of uh, offering clinical supervision. The main disadvantage of this theory is when the supervisor and the supervisee's orientations differ. So the conflict may hinder the supervisory process. And that's why I'm saying we are still in the journey, especially in my country where people can really say I am specifically this. So I'm going to discuss a few of these uh, psychotherapeutic uh, models in clinical supervision, and one being the mother, the father of all, um, the, the, this psychoanalytic uh, uh, clinical supervision approach or model which focuses on intrapersonal relationships within cells, that is the supervising the client, supervisor, colleagues, and others. So the emphasis is placed on resistance and defense mechanisms, transference, counter-transference, and the parallel process evolving similarities between therapy sessions and the supervision uh, sessions. And we know these are the key concepts in, uh, in psychoanalytic theory. And that's why I'm seeing as a supervisor, mastery of these concepts is very key and helping the supervisee to master the same is also quite important. We do have this, the, the group of humanistic theories, and I know the one that we have fallen in love with across the board and even here in our context of Africa is because um, our life uh, for very many years is we, we relied on teachers, we relied on experts, we relied on medicine men, we relied on experts of something. And so uh, trying to sell uh, counseling, especially in, in, in a continent that has always looked up to others. It's like it's, um, uh, there has to be, the, the, the power balance is there's someone higher than you. Uh, trying to bring person-centered theoretical understanding in uh, counseling relationships has really been very helpful trying to even bring out the, the real person, the real supervisee, the real therapist out of uh, whatever the self-concept has been created by the systems that I can say, socialization systems have been very, very helpful in making counseling uh, be like uh, separated and set apart uh, from probably what very many people may, may know of from the African context. In fact, here we really talk about, uh, we really talk about Thank you. So uh, you will find that um, the, the, the guidance in counseling uh, is, is the term commonly used in, uh, in Africa and even in my country, Kenya. And this came because guidance and counseling movement in my country in the late 80s, early 90s and all that is because there were many issues in schools like burning of the schools, uh, uh, other forms of violence in schools, uh, increase of drug abuse in schools, and uh, they saw uh, the corporal punishment that was even there 
uh, in the in the in in the in the schools was not working. And so now this humanistic touch becomes very important. Can you make the person become aware of who they are? Can you make the person know they are not in school because of others is for themselves? And so even in counseling, you know, this person-centered theory in creating working relationships has been very, very powerful. And I guess in most schools here in my country, when we are talking about counselor client relationship, we cannot leave person-centered theory. And it's also helping us a lot in Africa to come from other directed to self-directed way of working. And so this model will emphasize the core conditions as we know them, genuineness, empathy, and conditional positive regard in the supervisory relationship. And the most important aspect is for the supervisor to model these conditions during the supervisory sessions. Person-centered supervision downplays evaluation and encourages the supervisor to solve his or her dilemmas uh, through self-direction. Uh, the premise being that the supervisor has the capacity and resources to resolve issues, so long as the core conditions are present. And and this is this is powerful because I have applied it to my students from the university. Sometimes asking them now, you feel safe in this environment. If you are to do this counseling session again, how differently would you do it? And in most cases, you find that they have actually gotten uh, the appropriate, most helpful way of doing it. So when we think about the behavioral cognitive theories, the CBT, the, the group of, um, of behavioral theories, again, you just need to understand the different behavioral theories. You can begin from the classical conditioning. You can go to operant conditioning, social uh, learning theory by Albert Pandura. And in Africa, that becomes very critical, quite because we copy a lot from the people we consider as seniors, whether they are parents, grandparents, senior community leaders, we listen a lot. In fact, even in the biggest, bigger context, we listen a lot to our political leaders. And sometimes you may find that uh, those behavioral theories in a way work. It's like even the supervisor is waiting for you to give direction, unless you really intend to build them inside uh, inside out, behavioral theories, all of them going all the way to CBT. I know CBT is also proving to be very critical because of the many issues we have uh, been uh, 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 troubled with, and especially because of our thinking patterns. Yeah, uh, Africa is not easy to remove some thoughts. Uh, especially if the voice that spoke to you is a voice you really respected, it's a voice that you really believed in. And so you might be judging everything you do from that voice, and it may not be factual, it might not be rational. And so behavioral theories become very, very key. Family counseling theories, uh, what they do, they examine the supervisees in the context of the systems that they belong and the human relationships network and that significantly affect their psychological life and counseling practice. So common concepts include systems theory, uh, saying that if one part of a system is affected, then the rest of the system is affected. So also looking at the supervisee from where they are coming from. Could it be that the person you see here is a product of many other systems and um, the, the impact probably of that system in the way they practice and the who they are? The multi-generational patterns, this one speaks to us in a very big way. What have we carried from one to another? You'd be so shocked that most of us uh, have a lot of um, our institutions and culture where we did different programs up to now. And if you, you did programs in one institution all through, somebody can pick the multi-generational patterns, you know, if you're going to call that a system. Then the social learning, uh, uh, probably uh, activities, social learning, maybe behavior, rituals, and functionality. 
So we look at how differentiated maybe a supervisee is from the systems where they're coming from, how enmeshed they could be, just like the way we look at family members using the multi-generational theory by Bowen. So when you look at the structural theory, thinking about the family structure, thinking about the problem maintainers, roles, demands, manipulation, interaction, boundaries, systems, and coalitions, the same way you look at a family and how they operate using structural theory, you can also look at a, a supervisor like that or supervisees in a group, because here in Africa and my country, we really celebrate. We are community-based, even in our thinking, collective thinking, you know? So people prefer more of group uh, supervision uh, sessions than one-on-one. -on -one. It's also cheaper and affordable, and we are still building ourselves economically to see where we can uh, be and how we can uh, help as many interns, many students in counseling training, upcoming therapies to receive regular clinical supervision at affordable price and group uh, uh, setting become the best option most of the time. So strategic theory uh, with concepts like change, resistance, communication, emotion, emotional system, that can also be applied. And of course, experiential theory, emotional deadness, awareness, existentialism, humanism, growth experiences. And so maybe if you are approaching your supervisor from experiential theory point of view, you can be able to pick. And sometimes I have seen this uh, sad, probably I have my colleagues uh, uh, listening and watching uh, this. You realize that uh, a lot of our students, especially postgraduate students, get quite discouraged because maybe they are thinking once I have done the undergraduate uh, and I have progressed to do my master's, I will specialize in a certain area. But that doesn't happen. And it can, it's a systemic problem in many institutions of higher learning in my country. And so they can internalize that and think this is who I am because this is what the system has given me. And so also becoming aware of how systems have affected you as a supervisor is critical. And the supervisor is also uh, should also be in that position to understand the product I'm having right now is from which systems? How are the experiences, you know? And when I think about experiential theoretical foundations or approaches, I, I always think about um, human validation process model by Virginia Satire that I really, really uh, admire, you know? Because it speaks to many cultural contexts. And, and for me, I think Virginia Satire spoke a lot to me. She was able to go across borders, uh, reach out to diverse populations and cultures. And even here, an experience is an experience. Awareness is awareness. Every human being wants to be validated the way they feel and the way they think. And maybe from there, you can ask them, do you want to grow or do you want to stay where you are? And so even with the supervisor supervisor's relationship, and you're looking at them from that point of view, you have to think about where they are stuck in their status quo, change, and where they wanna be, and you can work with them. Then the narrative solution forecast, of course, we know family stories are critical, externalizing instead of personalizing issues, making meaning. The miracle question is magical, it's still magical, by the way. I use it quite a lot. Therapeutic letters are great. And for here, I think we are good at doing letters uh, because if I'm able to write something to someone that I may never give, but it will help me heal, then I had better do it because relationships are still quite sensitive in Africa. So we are learning even as counselors, we say we are not very different from the rest of the people and we are learning day by day to be differentiated. We do have postmodern theories with multicultural counseling therapy. So here the supervisor has no predetermined theoretical preposition. They may apply sociocultural constructivism approach. What's happening in the society right now? It, does it dictate or determine how counselors are working? And of course, yes. 
like now most of the counselors have been changed from just being those private, uh, very formal uh, clinical therapists to more or less combination of mental health experts and psychosocial support, especially following the, the COVID-19 pandemic impact. And so we, we can say, you, you might find now your supervisor is bringing uh, maybe presentations for you that are capturing what is happening in the society. Are you open to that? Are you aware? Then uh, narratives are critical at this point, personal stories. And by the way, stories are great in Africa. We like telling stories, we like listening to stories. And especially in this era, uh, this is a very good opportunity for us to really speak right now when we can talk about over three decades of having counseling training, uh, maybe in, in the country with, with structures, uh, we can start speaking, speaking about how these models are applicable to our context, start speaking how Mm, maybe our practice is, is unique in its own way and the other. And I guess this is this is good knowledge to add uh, to the world of uh, psychotherapy. Uh, the supervisor listens to the supervisor's stories from social political dynamics, which shapes the view of the therapist and so for the supervisor. And I have just spoken that. Key to note is the supervisor's cultural worldview and the supervises cultural worldview and the more cultural counseling therapeutic or therapy that should be given, that should be appropriate in that particular case and probably that particular moment. And so this is again an area that uh, is opening up uh, counselors, therapists and supervises in, in, in Africa. Who are we, you know? the supervises cultural worldview. Are you able to pick that? We have so many diverse cultures in Africa. In my country, we say we have 44 tribes. One tribe doesn't even speak any mother tongue. Those are our children. <laughs> yeah, they, they will speak probably clearly two languages, English and Swahili. But their mother tongue, it doesn't really um, like come out very, very well. And uh, that means they miss out on certain things um, that other people who can speak the mother tongue or the first language clearly can. And for sure, I have seen that a lot. Even when they go to practice, sometimes that can be a barrier. Okay. And I know right now we are trying in our own way to ensure that even if they learn English, they learn Swahili, they are able also to master their first language because they are practicing in such kind of a context. So it's important to know even a very good multicultural therapist have a very like clear uh, understanding, acceptance of their cultural identity. They also understand the cultural identity of their clients and they can now choose the appropriate multicultural therapy or intervention for their client. Same case with now with the supervisor and the supervising. So as a supervisor, I need to know about my multicultural identity. I need to understand my supervisor's cultural identity. And I also need to choose appropriate supervision uh, interventions or strategies that will fit their cultural orientation or their cultural preferences. And I guess we cannot run away from the changes that are happening. We do have this uh, group of theories, the transpersonal development theories. It's like out of me to others, out of me to wherever. So the focus is on the concepts of spiritual experiences. And by spiritual here, because Africans, we are notoriously religious, that's not my focus. I'm basically talking about making sense of uh, meaning of life, purpose, your mission, why are you here? What's your purpose? Do you still understand your space in the universe? Do you still see like you are a, a very good seed? <laughs> Do you see like you, you're some light of hope? Do you see like you are a change agent? 
And, and that doesn't just come easily. It comes a lot with some of the customary techniques that we are going to see at the end of this slide. So it's about thinking a higher reality. Like, it's not just me who knows things. There is a higher, probably supernatural being that may know better than I do. Uh, then change emphasis, you know, that things are not the same. I don't know what the next second is going to present. I don't know how life will be in the next minute. And the minute you realize that, I believe as a human being, you try reflecting and going inward. And that can be very, very helpful. And I speak this very confidently because I am a mindful self-compassion trained teacher with the Center of Mindful Self-Compassion California. And thank you so much. Uh, Steve Hickman, Chris Gamma, and uh, our very lovely founder, I would say, of self-compassion, Christine Neff. I have great teachers. I have Miriam Lute. I love you. Susan Pollack, love you. Galia, I love you. You know, you have been so amazing in supervising my work in your own unique way. And so even as I make this presentation, I am very, very grateful. And even support in Africa, to train cohorts one, cohorts two, cohort three, and now we are doing actually cohort four so that we can be able to spread this transpersonal development approach, I would say, very helpful in this day and time that also cuts across all uh, cultural populations and uh, diversities. It is also speaking to us in our own way as Africans, and that tells me, yes, uh, this is the way to go. Because as human beings, we are driven by inner purpose, inner meaning, but sometimes we are not aware because we don't have a platform sometimes to really speak about what we are going through. Altered state of consciousness, definitely, and especially when you rebel, maybe, like in Africa, we have our ways of taking ourselves there. If you come to our cultural events, you, you can tell when we really have a high of it, you know, whether it's through dance, whether it's through play, whether it's through song, whether it's through poem, uh, whether it's through acting, there is a way. And, and that's what I'm saying that uh, as we continuously uh, become aware of who we are as African therapists, uh, looking at the theories that we really respect that have been developed in the West and trying to put those theories into our context is very, very critical. But when we think about transpersonal uh, development theories, it's really speaking to me, me, me as a supervisor, me, me as a supervisor, me as a counselor. The therapy process for transpersonal development theories can be slow because it's a practice one has to embrace and has to be committed to be able to practice day in, day out, and especially centering ourselves into the present moment. I always tell people how I love my bells. Uh, these bells are a gift by my mentor and supporter big time, Chris Gama, who lives in Massachusetts. And uh, I celebrate the kind of nurturing that uh, I have gotten from uh, him and uh, Miriam uh, Lute, who lives in Germany, sometimes working in the USA. It's something I can say when I was given these bands, the first time I had them bring. That alone made me become aware of how my eyes are moving, how my heart is beating, and how my entire body is behaving. To me, that was magical. It's like before 2018, uh, I was in a world of my own because that's the first time I came hand to uh, face to face with uh, mindfulness and mindful self-compassion. And during covid I did a whole online course of mindfulness, you know, because mindfulness is like the base, the foundation of all other mindfulness practices like mindful self-compassion. And so when I say it's law, I can actually attest. 
I can allude to the fact that since I started this journey, it's been a slow but sure, cumulative, stabilizing journey, you know? And I can say I have created therapeutic relationships not only with other people, but also with myself. I have more room to forgive me. I have more room to accommodate me. I have more room to accommodate other people. And so I, I am one person who can say the transpersonal development models, like the mindful self-compassion is very, very helpful. Even when I'm with my supervisees, sometimes I just need to ring the bells if I have them, or I just ask them to center their breath especially if they were facing a very difficult moment with their clients or when I have to really find out the embodiment between the supervisee and the clients they were handling and probably how they handled that. Actually, there's a whole presentation I have on integration of mindful self-compassion into psychotherapy uh, that I have developed, especially with the unit twin Hadong. Uh, it's uh, an online university that is allowing people who can create content like me to do. And I've done that on Counseling Practicum 1 because I see a very big gap in the way we train our students to become counselors. And if that information is online, it can help very many people, just like what I'm doing right now, to make sure that this information is accessible to the counselors supervisor it's accessible to practicing counselors it's accessible to students it is accessible maybe to those people who would want to deepen their understanding about clinical supervision so you will find that uh, the transpersonal development theories like to bring healing of dichotomies or broken pieces in human beings it's just like bringing wholeness and so if that is also transferred to a supervisors from their supervisors I, I believe because I practice that it's amazing the customary techniques common to transpersonal development theories are like meditation and I want to tell you in Africa we are learning this very fast very few Africans meditate we do a lot of dancing we do a lot of singing and uh, meditation is, is kind of looked at more of like a religious practice than a space where you can go inward so that when you get outward, it's like peace to me, calmness to me, calmness to the world, calmness and peace to other people. And so breathing is also another area that I can tell you. Uh, I remember the first time I started doing the breathing that was meant to relax me and live in the present moment, it was difficult. I want to tell you, it was like coming back. And you can imagine now what that means. How is the system in the inside, if that's the way you're breathing? Yoga, uh, we do have a few people coming up with yoga. Yet yoga, they were not doing it more for like therapy, but they end up feeling thera therapeutic good in it, but more of physical exercise. And with the Asian community probably been very good at practicing yoga. But right now, we are having very many yoga coaches and trainees and trainers coming up. Mindfulness, living in the present moment. And I want to tell you, there's something we struggled with in Africa is living in the past. And so this is a sure bet for people in Africa, therapists, life coaches, who can apply these teachers today. I want to tell you because I've applied that in schools that we have adopted to practice mindfulness and mindful self-compassion. It's powerful because you can never be in two places at the same time. I cannot be in the present, yet I'm required to be here right now. I cannot be in the past and I'm required to be here right now. Very, very uh, helpful, very powerful practice. And then physical exercises in general. Yeah. You know, I have realized very simple movements mean a lot, mean a lot. You can always tell even with such simple movement, which part of your body is tense. And so you're getting in touch with me and getting in touch with you, getting in touch with I 
get in touch with the world. So constructive living is another technique that whatever life that I'm living, is it meaningful, you know? And of course, I can't forget my practice, mindful self-compassion. So uh, it's good to remind you uh, that uh, this this uh, is 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 a common like format or approach to understanding theories. Eh? And like who was a founder of the theory, you find most of the theories um, had experiences related to what they have developed, which is powerful. Just like I'm saying, I can't wait to see Africa develop therapeutic models that speak to them and speak about them. Then the view of human nature, how do we view human beings as Africans? And probably in general, but maybe coming to different uh, contexts, we have the South Africa, Eastern Africa, West Africa, North Africa, Central Africa. But in Africa in general, uh, how do we view human nature? And uh, I believe as we start these conversations as uh, African therapists, African uh, clinical supervisors, we may be able actually to have something very good coming up and, and coming out to share with the world. The key concepts, this could be like the guiding principles, ideas uh, that guide that particular theory. Or when you're dealing with a client, those key concepts are a must for you to master to be able to make sense of the client. And even for supervisees, when they are presenting cases using, using a theoretical uh, approach, uh, you are also trying to find out whether they have actually mastered whatever they are presenting. So each theory has a way it talks about the causes of psychological disturbance. It has a way that it talks about how psychological health is attained, the techniques to use, how to set goals of therapy, how to know whether your therapy goals have been achieved, the role of a therapist, because it's not every therapy uh, approach that will give you the same role as, as a supervisor or as a therapist. And it's always good to evaluate. Like That's why most of us now in Africa, we are saying, I guess it's something that is remaining uh, because if you find very many theories have been developed in the West, probably using the Western culture and experiences, and we respect a lot because there are very many common denominators, whereas there could be a few things that may not make sense. And probably when we just tick in, <laughs> we become more confused. And uh, I believe all of us are trying to contribute to common good common peace in, in the world so critiquing uh, a theory is is also very helpful what worked for you in that theory what did you find not working when you applied that theory and and for sure i remember the first time i fell in love with psychoanalytic theory when i was a beginning student because it spoke a lot about my unconscious uh, that was coming and invading my present without knowing. I can attest I had a lot of neurotic anxiety and uh, that is based on very many experiences I went through as a child, as a teenager, as a young adult, yet I wasn't really connecting that they do have a very huge impact on the way I was behaving then. And so I fell in love with psychoanalysis. But when I went to critiquing what doesn't work for me, it's the saying, I think I'm not understanding everything about libido. I think um, sometimes I don't want to be reminded so much of the painful negative past. Is there a way I can be helped to just move on, you know? And um, these personal experiences are very powerful in building theories. So as a supervisor, kindly do not miss that. And you can see I have a quote there as I come to an end, going to pieces without falling apart, you know, like being African without uh, falling out of the big universal family of therapists. And I believe it's possible. They are core things that every therapist must know. Where you come from, Europe, America, Australia, Africa. So that is one whole. But you may find that different contexts, and especially for us in Africa, we really have to rethink 
think where we are in therapy, how our experiences have been, uh, so that we, we can also be able to feed the world with uh, who we are. And, and I believe that's, that's, that's very powerful because we are, when you're thinking about transpersonal development theories, majority of these thinking has come from the Eastern. So we have Eastern, we have Western. So what do we have from Africa? And so I, I believe uh, those who are watching this, listening to me, and especially therapists in Africa, supervisors in Africa, we can start really having a very serious discussion. And our brothers and sisters in the West are always waiting. One thing I love about them is that they love new knowledge. They love to know how is this working in Africa. Like my colleagues in the uh, Center for Mindful Self-Compassion or my big global family of uh, MSC, Mindful Self-Compassion. And uh, now that we have the MSC Africa, <clears throat> which is just uh, growing, it's, we launched it um, last year. We formed it last year, actually. We haven't launched it, and I'm really, really grateful for the Center of Mindful Self-Compassion. We are thinking, uh, we will try, like with Mindful Self-Compassion, where we have a lot of good support to find out how we are navigating this space of mindfulness and self-compassion. So where are we as Africans is a key question to ask in terms of developing our own psychotherapeutic models. So probably if you're watching this and you share this, probably there's an African somewhere who's trying to bring up a model. I know I tried uh, to adapt and I, I modify Virginia Satire's five-stage model to an eight-stage model. And I did that for my PhD. I don't know where my book is. But I know I have that book uh, uh, on um, uh, helping internally displaced persons in my country during the post-election violence 2728. And I considered the fact that it has uh, a divergent uh, multicultural ingredients. Uh, I looked at the way uh, we deny our feelings, we deny our thoughts, you know, as Africans, we, we live a lot in that denial. And I felt Virginia Satire says, it's okay, it's okay to feel angry, it's okay to feel sad, it's okay to validation of that feeling. And I discovered as you validate somebody's feeling, especially, it kind of makes them stabilize. And if you can marry that with the MSC, I can't wait to see how I can be able to uh, re rethink MSC in an African context, just like I did with Virginia Satire's model, the human validation process model. And um, I also am very grateful for the Scholar's Prize for publishing my book. And I hope I can also be able to publish a locally, uh, maybe product, uh, with uh, resources availability. So it's also good to ask yourself as a supervisor, what key concepts would guide your practice in supervision? And as we're also thinking about you practicing in Africa, maybe we have uh, westernized uh, or western uh, supervisors in, uh, in, in Africa. Uh, we would love sometimes to hear their voices, what they see. Is, 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 is helpful in what may need improvement. As I wind up, effective supervisors observe what's going on. They don't ignore their present. They mentor. And mentorship that is quite effective is one that is coupled with role modeling. They coach where it's very necessary. We are very open to coaching in Africa because it's been our style. Somebody has to tell because they know better do this. So you can imagine coaching when you're not an expert as a supervisor. We evaluate, inspire, create an atmosphere that promotes supervisory self-esteem. It's nurturing a, a future therapist that is confident of themselves. Of course, skills, competent, knowledgeable, having a set of values that define their character and what they want their clients to also model and probably developing professionally. 
supervises the type effective build teams, cohesion, resolve conflicts, promote evidence-based practice, and shape agency culture. So wherever they are, they, they need to understand what is the agency culture and what am I doing to promote this culture or shape a certain culture. Well, they're also taking care of the profession as well as themselves. And we are actually taking the World Health Organization um, input in May 2019 seriously as therapists. And especially now that we are handling very many issues, we need to also take care of ourselves. It's my desire that you've been um, able to learn from my presentation. Kindly, when you go through this, to make it better, let me hear your comments. Let me hear your input. This has been Dr. Susan Gitau with my presentation, Application of Psychotherapeutic Models in Clinical Supervision. As Santini Sana, we said, those are some of the references that you can go through uh, to empower yourself in this day and time. So thank you very much and may God bless you. Asante Sana. Bye.